in this lecture we will learn the kinematic indeterminacy in the first topic so already we have discussed theoretical indeterminacy of beams frames trusses so kinematic indeterminacy or kinematic indeterminacy so first definition so it is defined as the number of independent components of joint displacement both in case of translation and rotation with respect to a specified set of axes okay actually it is no it is a kinematic therefore it is a uh, no the kind of a response character okay how can we describe the deform the shape Okay, with a unique uh, parameters. That's what kinematic indeterminacy. Okay. So it is also called as degree of freedom. Freedom means in which it can move the joint, in which direction it can move. That's the degree of freedom. D O F. So here, independent component means the component. which does not affect other parameters for example we can consider a double pendulum case case of two degree of freedom okay that means the entire response or deformation can be described by the use of two parameters so in the double pendulum we use two parameters that is theta 1 and theta 2 to describe the motion of the pendulum in first case now we keep d1 is equal to 0 that is the first arm is not moving but the second arm moves okay and makes some theta 2 angle that means without affecting theta 1 value theta 2 can change similarly in the second case we keep theta 2 is equal to 0 that means second arm still there is no uh relative displacement okay but theta 1 the first arm is moving and making some theta 1 angle so that means the change in theta 1 does not affect the value of theta 2 that that means theta 1 and theta 2 can change their values without affecting other values so these are acting independent that's why these two theta 1 theta 2 are called as independent coordinates otherwise called generalized coordinates these are two degrees of freedom okay the same case we can even represent the motion using x y coordinates So here the first arm is of L1 length, that is fixed length, and second arm L2 length. And the motion or displacement of L1 is represented by x1 and y1 coordinates. Similarly, the second pendulum by x2 and y2 coordinates from the same origin. Okay. therefore we can you know represent mathematically the motion or the location of the first pendulum as x1 square plus y1 square is equal to l1 square similarly here in this case x2 minus x1 the whole square plus 
y2 minus y1 the whole square is equal to l2 square. So here only two coordinates can be independent, other two are dependent. Because here, for example, say y1 no can be represented as the function of l1 and the x1. l1 is constant, x1 is the area. Therefore, we can that is y1 is dependent on x1. Similarly, here also we can make it one parameter dependent, another parameter independent. So, therefore, totally only two independent coordinates we have. That's why the motion of the pendulum, that is this double pendulum is of two degrees of freedom. So in the next example, we can consider fixed beam. Is again of two degrees of freedom. Okay, so the entire displacement or deformation of beam can be described by the use of one translation and one rotation. So consider a vertical loading as well as one top movement, a rotation and one displacement, and as the support is fixed, there is no Translation and that no rotation okay, at supports. So we can represent the deformation of the span by the use of theta and delta. As per the definition of kinematic intensity, the parameter should be independent. So we can see here. So, in the first case, we keep the displacement the zero. Okay, while the rotation you know, happens, that is, theta has some value, but delta is equal to zero. That indicates the value change in theta value is not affecting the delta. So that, that's the requirement of kinematic intervals. Okay, that means independent. So the other case, keeping theta is constant, that is zero, we can change the value of delta. Okay, theta is zero, but delta is there. So that uh, delta will not affect theta. Therefore, theta and delta are the degrees of freedom of fixed beam. So now we will see uh, the degrees of freedom of some of the joints. Okay, that is a joint in a space frame. It is a space frame. Therefore, together each joint has six degrees of freedom. That means three translation as well as three rotation. So in x, y, x, x, y, z directions it can you know, move. Similarly in x and y about x, about y, about z it can rotate. Okay. So next, a joint in the plane tree. So plane frame means we know only we have x y some okay 2D. Therefore we will have x and y direction. That is it can move in either in x direction or y direction or both. 
similarly it can rotate about either direction. That's what two translations, one rotation. Totally three degrees of freedom. So third one is a plain truss joint. As we know that the truss cannot no, resist any movement, so that is the movement is not considered there, only axial force is considered. So we have only two translations, there is no rotation, that is delta x and delta y. That's what is a two degrees of freedom joint. Okay? Sorry, this is space. Space means, sorry, it's a plane actually, not a space plus a joint. Okay. So, if space means, we have to include delta, that is delta z also, therefore 3 d of it. In plane plus joint, we have 2 d of Now, the expression for kinematic indeterminacy. So, kinematic indeterminacy can be determined using expression. So, dk is equal to 2j minus e. Okay, uh, or 2j minus e. For pinned 2D frame, where J number of joints, R is number of reactions. Similarly, for pinned 3D space frame means 3 times J, because we have 3 degree of freedom at each joint. In 2D, we have 2 degrees of freedom. That's, that's why it is 2G. Okay. For the space diagram, 3G, 3 degrees of freedom. So, for each joint, we will have 3 degrees of freedom. That's why dj. So minus r, what on restriction? Similarly for rigid 2D. So rigid 2D means there will be rotation also. That's why 3D is of it, 3j minus r. Rigid 3D space means you will have 6 degrees of freedom at each joint. That's why 6j minus total constant. So the remaining will be Freedom of degrees of freedom. Okay. So, it is pretty simple the kinematic interdependency that is total number of possible movements minus total number of arrested movements. What is just like no trust? For example, say, because of what we, we are arresting three. That is horizontal movement, vertical movement, and rotation. So, these things we have to deduct from the total available, uh, total possible movement. That's why that is number of degrees of freedom into joint minus half. And we need to know the extra tips, just like no. And in the case of static indeterminacy, we saw something about internal hinge, giant hinge, like that. Here also we should know what are the degrees, degree of freedom, no internal hinge, the external, that is uh, internal hinge as well as giant hinge. Yeah. So in internal hinge we have extra, that is extra degrees of freedom. For example, say for 2D, it can move in X and Y direction. There is two translation, otherwise it can it can have different rotation at either side. Let's say theta one and theta two. Therefore, it has four degrees of freedom. Okay, for two D in internal range. Similarly for three D we have nine degrees of freedom. Because it can move in X direction, Y direction, in Z direction, that is three translation, as well as in either plane, it can have Two different rotation, theta one, theta two, theta three, theta four, theta five, theta six. So therefore, nine degrees of theta. So 
a joint hinge in 2D case will have m minus 1 series of m means number of members meeting at that joint. For 3D it is 3 times m minus 1 series of So in all above the cases, we have included the axial deformation also. Of course, if the numbers are rigid or inextensible, so that we can neglect axial deformation means, we can detect that there is of data. So, inextensible, rigid means a degree of freedom in each number can be ignored. That is the act, the the actual degrees of freedom or kinematic indeterminacy is equal to the general kinematic indeterminacy minus number of members which are rigid or inextricable. Now for frame. If the frame consists of no triangular number that is shape. Then the frame cannot have linear displacement. Only rotations that is theta per joint. So, this is the case for if the members are rigid, inextensive, that is axial deformation or neglected. Okay. Similarly, displacement components in y directions is 0. In x direction, equal at same level, that is each floor we have the same movement. For example, in this frame, delta y1 to delta 9 is 0 if the numbers are rigid. Similarly, same level that is 2 joined to 5 8 we experience same displacement that is del x2 is equal to del x5 is equal to del x8 similarly del x3 is equal to del x4 is equal to del x9 In cable frame, again, if the members are inextensible or rigid, then y2 and y4 is 0, and because 1 and 5 are fixed up support, therefore it cannot move, already 0, and x2 Delta X2, Delta X3, Delta X4, and Delta Y2. So, out of these four, only two are independent. Now, 
now we see some example so first one is fixed to beam and this is a 2d rigid therefore three times j minus r expression for kinematic indeterminacy here number of joints are two that is a is equal to two or capital r number of restrictions or constraint is equal to three plus three. For each support, we have three. That is, three is the written raster in fixed support. Therefore, three plus three is equal to six. Therefore, three j minus six or is equal to zero. So it is kinematically determined. We can say that means cannot move. No second example. Simply supported beam. So again, D K is equal to three J minus R. So J is equal to number of joints only two, but restriction. So only for hinge support, we have two constraints. Here we have only one constraint. That's what what the three. Therefore, DK is equal to three. Okay, three degrees of freedom. Here we assume that no, the number can extend in x direction. That is, axial deformation is allowed. Suppose if axial deformation is not allowed, that is. The number is rigid or inextensible. Then we have to deduct that degrees of freedom. Only one, only one member. So only one deformation or we can deduct from the general beam. Therefore, D K is equal to general D K minus number of members inextensible is equal to here. Therefore, is equal to two. The answer is two. So next example on truss structure. So truss is a pin joint 2D structure. That's why we have to apply D K is equal to two J minus R. Here J is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. R is equal to here two, here one. Therefore, D K is equal to two J minus R is equal to. So next example on water frame. Here number of joints is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Number of reactions all are fixed support. Therefore three plus three plus three. Therefore, D K is equal to three J minus R. It is equal to twenty-seven. If we consider the inextensible numbers, then we have to deduct the number of inextensible numbers. That is, here how many numbers we have? Fourteen numbers we have. Therefore, the deformation that is degrees of freedom will be D general D K minus M dash. Twenty-seven minus fourteen is equal to.
So another example with the internal hinge. So here number of joints is equal to 1, 2, 3. You should not count the internal hinge as a joint. Okay? It is a part of number. So R is equal to 2, 1, 3. Therefore, 6. This due to internal hinge, we have 4 extra degree of freedom. And it will be steady. One in x direction, other one in y direction. And two occasions, theta one and theta two, theta two. Okay, therefore, dk is equal to this regular expression plus this extra degrees of data. So, 3j minus r plus 4, which is equal to 7. And if the numbers are inextensible, then this at 3, and that is the fixed joint, there is no movement. Okay? So, hinge also there is no movement, that is 1, 2, this 3, and this is 4. So, 1 and 3 already arrested, there is no movement. But 2 and 4 is due to inextensible nature, will not that is dx2 is equal to dx4 is equal to 0. So, 2 degrees of freedom cut in the regular dk. Therefore, 7 minus 2 5. Okay? Okay, the last example in kinematic indeterminacy is again one portal frame which has two internal features. So here we have six joints and portal reaction of a section is equal to three plus three six. Due to internal hinges, we will have four plus four. 8 degrees of freedom extra. Therefore, in actual kinematic intimacy expression, we have to add this 8 extra. So, dk is equal to 3j minus r plus 8. So, which is equal to Okay. So, if the numbers are inextensible, then all y components are zero. For example, L y two, L y three. L Y4 and L Y5 all are 0. And X displacement at the same flow will be same. Okay, that, that means L X2 is equal to L X5. Similarly, L X3 is equal to L X4. And the x the x displacement in hinges are zero. Del x seven is equal to zero. Del x eight is equal to zero. Therefore, totally eight degrees of freedom we have to cut from the regular x case. Therefore, dk dash is, is equal to dk minus eight.
So, totally 20 minus 8 